Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another Victory Group. We're so glad you're with us. If you're a visitor, we welcome you. I'm Pastor John, and who are you, beautiful young woman? I am Pastor Aisha. We're the pastors of Victory, and so we're glad you're with us. Let's dive in. We've been in a brand new, fresh off the press series <laughs> entitled The Courage to Stand Strong. Mm. I mean, our last series mm. was great, but now we're in a whole new one, and it's just fresh off the press, and it's awesome. It's awesome because I think it's very much needed for what people are encountering at this point yeah, of time. Yeah, Amen. just an on-time word. And yes, so very on-time. We've been talking about the courage to stand strong. Yes. Courage to stand strong. Coming out of Romans chapter 4, which is dealing with Abraham, who had been in faith for a child. God had promised him a child in his old age. Mm -hmm. And in the text, Abraham is, he's 100 years old now, and his wife's womb is dried up. There's nothing happening between the two of them. Mm -hmm. But it says in Romans 4, he was standing strong in, in faith. faith. He was strong in faith. And so Abraham was standing strong. And so you gotta get to a place where you're willing to stand strong in faith and whatever yeah. you're facing. And you know what, when I think about that and Abraham standing strong in faith, um, we got to get to the point that we stand strong in faith despite the odds that are set against us. Because even though it didn't look like it was going to happen for him, he still stood strong yeah. in faith. And that's what many of us many times encounter. Um, it looks like um, what God said is not going to happen, but we still have to stand strong in faith knowing that what God said, if he said it, it shall happen and that settles it. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, yeah, and I think we talked about already, there's a difference between still standing mm, and standing strong. Yes. You know, there's a lot of believers, they're still standing, Yes. but there's some that are standing strong. Yes. Still standing denotes this position of surviving. I'm, I'm, I'm still standing, I'm just surviving. Standing strong is a position of reigning. Yes. I'm strong in faith. I'm not giving up. I'm not backing down. I'm standing strong. And so we gave a definition of, of strong. And what you have that, what was our definition yes. of strong? Strong is having the ability to resist what you need to resist to do what you need to do. Yeah, so that's when you're strong. You're resisting, man. You're holding your course. I'm resisting what I need to re doubt, fear, you know, worry, resisting that so that I can do what I need to do, stand strong and you have in to, faith. And you have to stand strong because that's what becomes a testimony to others and that's what brings people to the kingdom of God when they see you standing yeah. strong in yeah. your faith. Yeah, absolutely. And so we said you can, you know, there, we painted a picture of what standing strong looks like. We gave mm -hmm. some of that stuff. Let's go through that real quick. What, what does standing strong look like? Number one. Um, first of all, we said that it's uncompromising in your convictions. So you can't be turned around. I'm, nope. I'm uncompromising. I'm not giving up. I'm not back down off of my conviction mm -hmm. of what I'm going after. That's not number two. It's being unwavering and confident uh, in confidence of the faith process of the faith process. And that's we I think we talked about the ABCs of faith. Mm -hmm. You know, A is ask. It's ask after ask. And then B is believe. Believe. You got to you know what the Bible says, whatever you ask for, believing you shall have or receive, you shall mm -hmm. have that. So you got to ask, you got to believe. And then letter C is what? Confess and declare. Confess and declare and take that corresponding action. Suitable so action. Those are the ABCs mm -hmm. of faith. And so I'm unwavering in the confidence of that faith process. And Amen. number three. Number three is it means you're unflinching in your courage. Yeah, so I'm willing to call the devil's bluff. When hey. he says, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to know you not, not nope. today. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm willing, I'm going to call his bluff. I'm unflinching in my courage. And then number four. It means to be unrelenting in your commitment in your faith profession. So we keep saying it. We, we keep say saying it. And we I say, say it I'm strong. I might feel weak. Let the weak say they're strong. strong. I'm strong. I'm healthy. I'm delivered. And so you're unwit. You say it today, tomorrow, next week, next month, Until it next manifests. next year. And so, um, you know, we we said all throughout the Bible, there's this mandate by the Creator mm -hmm. to you know to stand strong. You see it in the Old Testament. You see it in the New Testament. And God's mentality is simply this. You know, in in Luke um, chapter one verse thirty seven, it talks about that any word from God won't return void. Amen. That it you know it will do exactly what it says. That for with God nothing is impossible. Amen. And so I think in the Amplified, it says that there's no word in God that doesn't have the power to fulfill what it said. And so mm -hmm. God expects us to stand strong. Amen. He expects us as we represent him before people and dealing with the devil to stand strong because God's mentality is if I said it, 
Mm -hmm. You can do it. Amen. You know, when, you know, when God created birds to fly, he didn't send them to flight school. Mm -hmm. They automatically had the ability to fly. Mm -hmm. Fish had the ability to swim because mm -hmm. he created them to swim. So in his word, he tells us stand strong. Amen. So we have the ability to do that. So God expects us to be strong. Yes. Now, here's the deal. Even though the ability to be strong is in you, it has to be cultivated. Yes has to be cultivated. It's not it's not something that's just going to happen overnight. You got to cultivate this in your thinking. You know, Amen. you you got to work as a man thinks in his heart, so, so is he. Be. So this has to be cultivated. Now, what is cultivate? Amen. What what did we give definition for cultivate? We said the cultivate is to skillfully and intentionally take away whatever is hindering your growth and replace it with what will benefit your growth. So you, you, we gotta cultivate this in our mind about yes. being strong to the point that we're persuaded. Yes. We're persuaded that we can do it. What's persuasion mean? What, what did we talk about with being persuaded? We said persuaded? persuasion is to be won over to the point of changing your mind as a result of influence and information. So when we're talking about cultivating this being strong on the inside, based upon those two mm -hmm. definitions Pastor Aisha just gave, we're talking about I intentionally and skillfully remove any hindrances Amen. in my life mm -hmm. that's preventing my growth mm -hmm. and I replace it with beneficial things yes. that helps my growth so that it brings me to a place of being won over mm -hmm. in my mind. I, yeah. I, I change how I think because of this new influence and information that I'm feeding myself. So you can stand strong in faith. So you can yeah, absolutely stand mm. strong in faith. So real quickly, let's run through that when you're cultivating, there's some things that it becomes a matter of when you're cultivating. So let's go through them of what they are real quick. First of all, we said it's a matter of consecration. Consecration. So I got to detach myself from stuff. Mm. I got to and devote my life to live by his principles and his mm. word. So that's number one. Number two. It's a matter of information. I got to get the right information. Mm -hmm. I got to acquire the right spiritual information so I can get that inside of me. Number three. It's a matter of saturation. So then once you get the right information, you got to saturate yourself with the right information because what you saturate yourself with is what you believe. Mm -hmm. What you believe. What's the next one? The next one is it's a matter of confession. So I verbally get it in my heart. Yeah. I, I declare I'm strong. I declare I'm an overcomer. I just, I declare it. I speak it. I speak it. I, because there's life and death and power of your tongue. Yeah. So I speak it and speak it and speak it. What's the next one? It's a matter of deliberation. I make a decision. I come to the deliberation table with myself and make a decision that I'm going to do the righteous thing. Yes. Regardless of how I feel. And then what's the next one? It's a matter of determination. And that is, I discipline my flesh that regardless of how I feel, that I feel it's not working, I don't let that drive me off course. I know that even though I can't see it work, it's <laughs> working on my behalf. Yeah, that reminds me of Mom Woody. She commanded her flesh to get up and get on that prayer line That's this right. Morning. You don't feel like it, but get up <laughs> is what we're doing. And then what's the last one? It's a matter of expectation. It's a matter of expectation that I act like it's so. Yes. I act like it's so. And I think, you know, what we, came, what we gave out, near the end that our church just exploded with in yes. the last message mm -hmm. is um, God began to tell us what next year is going to be like in mm -hmm. Psalms 105 yes. in a nutshell it it says that God is increasing me yes. and he's making me stronger mm -hmm. he's increasing me and making me strong next year as you stand you got to get this you got to be able to stand strong so that you can let the Lord increase you and make you stronger that yeah. next year what God said no matter what you face mm -hmm. next year you have to believe you are stronger than the thing you're facing. Yeah, and something that you said um, in, in the last message too, we know that you are, you have a spirit of expectation for what you're believing for because we see you praise for it before it even That's manifests. That's right. That's right. You praise it. You don't wait till it shows no. up to give them praise. Mm -mm. You praise them now. Yeah. You act like it's so. But next year is going to be a year Woo! of God using you like never before. But you're going to have to stand strong. And you stand strong based on totally believing that whatever's coming against me, whatever I'm facing, I'm strong. I can whip it. I'm stronger than the thing I'm facing. Therefore, I can face it and stand strong. Amen. All right, we're running out of time. We got to give you real quickly what um, the questions you're going to talk about today. And this is a very pivotal part of group because now you get a chance to interact with each other off of what we just talked about. First question is always the same. What, what did we discuss today? Make sure everybody's on the same comprehension page of what we, we talked about. And how does it apply to you? Yeah, how does it apply to you? And then number two, concerning, you know, are, are you standing strong? Are you standing strong? You know, mm -hmm. do, do you feel that um, you're, you're standing strong? We gave the definition of the strong, that it's able, you're able to resist what you need to resist so you can do what you need to do. How are you doing that? 
-hmm. how give examples of how you, you what you're dealing with now and how you're doing it and um, if not why aren't you doing it why? why why aren't you doing it but the main point of this is how if you're standing strong how are you doing it and then lastly what do you what what do you need to do to uh, go ahead what, what were you gonna I was say? gonna say what areas do you need to cultivate in order to stand strong we gave you um, seven yeah, areas yeah. that you need you needed to um, help you to cultivate in order to stand strong and maybe are there some areas that you're not um, standing strong in cultivating yes. and if not which areas do you need to work on so that you can cultivate in order to stand yeah strong? so in those seven you know those seven things that we gave you you know uh, what are you not doing what do you need to work on mm -hmm. and so that you can stand strong because this coming up has to be a time of you standing and strong. hold one another accountable we got to go we are <laughs> out of time so glad I had a chance to be with y'all today. We love doing this and spending time with our church family via technology. We have a great time in group Amen. today. If there's somebody new there, love on them. Make them feel like they're your brother, your cousin, your sisters, cousins, mothers, fathers, uncles, grandson, something like that. Well, we got to go, but we always close this way. There's victory only one place in the universe. Where is that, girlfriend? In Christ Jesus. Be blessed.